Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Joker DX application building series webinar. My name is Adrian, and I'm a technical consultant here in Joket, and I'll be the moderator for today. So um, before we begin, we do have a few housekeeping uh, housekeeping items to go over with. Um, this event is being recorded, so if you miss any or all of the events, you'll have the opportunity to access to the recordings recordings later on. We are also taking questions from the audience, so if you have any time during today's present presentation, you have a question, please go to the chat or either the Q&A button to submit your questions and we'll get to it as many as we can at the end of the webinar. Um, also, at the end of the webinar, you'll be directed to a survey form. Please do provide us with feedback so we can further improve our presentation better for you in the future. And finally, do stay with us till the end of the webinar. So we'll be uh, doing a drawing of two Joget Academy vouchers. So stick around and hopefully you'll be one of our two lucky winners for today's webinar. Okay, with that, we'll be kicking off with today's webinar, which is the no code, low code, pro code to build a loan processing app. Our speakers today is Hugo Lim, who is the VP of uh, customer success at Joget. Hugo, you want to say anything? Yep. Hi, sure. Thanks, Adrian. Welcome, everyone, to our uh, webinars today. Thanks for um, picking out your time. Hope that you can um, pick up one or two things today. Thank you, Hugo. And we have also Penny Lee, Marketing Associate at Joket. You want to say hi, Penny? Hi, everyone. Welcome to our application building series webinar, and I hope you enjoy the session. Thank you, Penny. Right, so in today's webinar, the speakers will be performing a bit of role playing. Um, Hugo will be playing as the internal IT team for a pseudo bank called ABC, and uh, who has the technical skills to develop the app, but requires business, re business requirements from the business process owner, which will be played by Penny uh, from the loan department. Now she knows the ins and outs of the business processes and has some beginning experience in building the app via Joget. Uh, she's what we call a citizen developer. So before they begin the demo, uh, Penny will be explaining how the old way of developing apps and through the demo, they'll show on how the new way of developing apps on all three types of levels or categories, the no code, the low code, and also the pro code way. And lastly, if we have time, we'll do the Q&A session. Right. Um, Passing the controls over to you, Penny. Give me a moment. You now have control, Penny. All right. Okay. So with that, let's begin the session and look at the old way that we used to leverage on for our business processes. So as shown on the screen, looks like most of the time, IT team has been trying to understand the business requirements. So what do you think, Hugo? Oh yeah, um, so in the traditionals or the usual ways of doing things, um, the IT teams would actually need, need to sit down with the business teams and perform uh, requirement gatherings. And um, the turnaround times uh, in between um, going back and try to digest through the, comb through the information and coming up with a mock-up and then um, getting back to the business team to seek for confirmations, uh, the, turn, uh, the turnaround times, uh, it's very long and time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so uh, we often needed to have uh, everything uh, uh, confirmed and, and correct um, at the first go, right? So that when we uh, embark on the implementation phase of it, right? So this is, um, um, in, in IT terms, uh, we have a development methodology on this. We call this as the waterfall model, right? So mm. um, once we have started implementing, uh, making changes, right, if uh, down the line, um, um, when we reach to the UAT, user accept acceptance test uh, phase, mm -hmm. uh, making changes would be very, very costly and uh, labor intensive. Um, that is why, um, um, on the always using the always of doing things is not as um, um, as good as efficient um, um, anymore. Now, uh, now that we have uh, uh, the the new ways of doing things, which we're gonna go into next. Mm, yep. In fact, during um, passing the message around, most of the time communication gaps occur, 
and between me, the business users, and your team, the IT users. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's where we lose our efficiency in delivering the business needs. Yep. And with that being said, um, Hugo, the other day you told me that there is this next generation low code way of building mm -hmm. enterprise applications, and we have even tried it on the other day. So, mm -hmm. can you elaborate more on how this low code way is able to help both of us in terms yep, of sure. uh, business users and IT users is able to collaborate on a platform by using the no code, low code, and pro code? Yep. Yep. So, um, the new way, the low code way, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, um, the ideal I idea uh, um, behind this and the practices is very different. Um, uh, this is where um, the business uh, folks and the technical folks would be able to get together on the same platform uh, mm -hmm. where each of the owl uh, will come to the table with their with their know-how, right? So for the IT, they have the know-how in, in order to implement uh, uh, the applications and to do the heavy lifting, right? For example, integrations, uh, functionalities, developments, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And yeah. across the aisle, the business uh, folks, right? Uh, they they have the all the requirements in place, right? So they, they know uh, what is needed in order to um, solve uh, real user uh, business problem. So, so uh, using a local platform, this is where they are able to meet in between and being able to collaborate uh, in real time uh, mm -hmm. in a meaningful way, right? And, and I believe that with this, um, we would be able to reduce the time to market, right? And increase, uh, in turn, increase uh, the uh, business efficiency. Mm, yep. Well, that means a uh, business user without technical skill is able to build a full-fledged enterprise app with an IT user who is without the business experiences. Well, I think this is pretty cool. So since we are on this, why not we showcase a live demo to the audience to prove that a business user like me and an IT power user like you are able to come together and build a loan processing app. And right, so before we move on to the demo, let's have a quick poll to see which persona you are in, whether if you are a non-coder, a low coder or a pro coder. So with that, yep, I'm going to hand it over to you, Adrian. Hi, All right. thanks a lot. So um, so this is a poll to know what best describes you. So if you're a non-coder, low-coder, pro-coder, I'm just going to leave it for another few more seconds before I'll tally up the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got about, about 70% has already voted. And by the looks of it, it's 36% um, for non-coder and pro-coder. Oh, okay. Yep. So that's about it for now. So I'm going to end the poll. And then, um, right. So actually now by ending the poll, we have about 37% uh, which are non-coders with the second being pro-coders and about 30% is going to be low-coders. Right, so okay. let's move on to what's the demo. I'm going to stop right. sharing and I think it's about back to you, Penny. Okay, cool. Yep. So let's start off by designing a new app. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So in terms of the app ID, I have a question for you, Hugo. Should mm -hmm. I just um, keep it simple, like just call it as request, or should I put the full name as in a loan application request? So, well, uh, request is too ambiguous. Um, you can just call it a loan, loan app. Yeah. Okay. Keep it short and meaningful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we create a new form. Yep. So um as what we have discussed earlier, I'm going to put it simple and just request. And the form name. So you're we'll creating be... the mm -hmm. um the form to be submitted, right? For for a yep. loan process. Okay. Yep. All right. Go ahead. All right. Um so yeah, you can just request. call it request. Cool. And this will be the loan request, right? Mm -hmm. So save it. And here we go. So let's rename the section. 
and I'm going to call this as um, application request. Right. And um, okay. Mm -hmm. So Benny, what you? I'll suggest is that mm -hmm. um, the eventual form may be very long, but um, so we are embarking on these new uh, practices, we call it DevOps, where we have mm -hmm. um, iterative development cycle, right? That, uh, having said that, uh, in, in this demo, right, what we are trying to demonstrate is that we are building layers upon layers. So mm -hmm. can you please keep your form design short and concise? And uh, we, will, we will, when we hit certain milestone checkpoint and we validate that it, it actually works, then we need to add another layer of complexities, mm, um, right. layers upon layers. Yep. So yep. just add a couple of views. <laughs> all right. So let's keep it simple. And I'm going to drag another text field and get put it in. And I'm going to name this as amount, the loan amount. OK. And the text area, which is I renamed it to the address. Mm -hmm. As well as the ID, okay. So let's preview it, and well, it looks good to me. So right. I'm going to save the form. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's make use of the app generator button mm -hmm. to generate the CIUD, which stands for create, retrieve, update, and delete, as yep. well as the approval process. Yep. So for the audience out there, this is the uh, we can think of this as the boilerplate. So we are making use of this form that we just created as the base um, to facilitate in a approval process and also um, uh, to be able to like what Benny explained uh, a CIUD functionality. Yep. All right. So let's launch the user view and go to the runtime. Here we go. So let submit. A new request to try the form. All right, so let me try that. And amount, say about 1000. Address, maybe oh, okay, one, two, three, maybe three. And hit the submit button. And here we go. As we can see, the process is now being started. And as this is a live demo, and due to the interest of time, I play two roles here and which is the applicant and the approval. So now that I will be in the approval head and there's a new inbox, so let's check it out. And if everything is okay, I'm going to approve it. Mm -hmm. And yep, click the complete button. Wait for it to load for a while. All right, here we go. So. With that, the first process has been started successfully. And before we proceed to the next step, let's go back to the form builder to further enhance the form and make the fields here to be mandatory. So Just before you do that, um, mm -hmm. can I suggest something? Um, yep. So an audience might be asking, so mm -hmm. what happened okay. to the submitted applications? Is there a way, way to view them? Submitted application? Mm -hmm. Mm, yep, definitely. So we will you know, go over to the manage request section and right. here we go. So this it will be the submitted uh, request that the applicant can view it. And now that you have bring this up, I've noticed that we have these ID things over here. So I so in this case, let's bring up the data list builder mm -hmm. and make the build changes, uh, remove it, remove the ID. So Very that is nice. much more meaningful and we did arrange it a bit. Maybe we can yeah. also um, add mm -hmm. in the status column. Status column, okay, approval status. Mm -hmm. Let's preview and see. All right, so we got meaningful status. Okay, so preview and well, yep, it looks good. Very too. cool. Yeah, right. So let me save this. Okay, and go to the runtime and refresh it. And all right, awesome. So with that, let's go back to the form builder. Mm -hmm. And okay, so let's try to make some all the fields to be mandatory. 
to improve the user experience. And okay, so when you go inside to one of the view and scroll down until we see the validator. So select the default validator option. So you are trying scroll... to enforce uh, uh, user input? Mm, yep. Okay, so that cool. uh, can collect yeah. the entire details. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So, okay. So we scroll all the way down until we see the mandatory and we need to make sure that this chatbot is being checked. Mm -hmm. And click OK and let's have a look at it while we wait for it to load. Let's edit the second option. Okay. All right. So let's do the same. Validator, select default validator. And then mandatory the shop is being checked. And the same for the third option, the address. So then default validator and mandatory is checked. OK. So click OK and preview the, the form. It's good to save it. And cool. Let's go to the runtime to take a look at it. All right, so now that we have this um, read, dot, read dot here, which indicates that the fields here is mandatory, let's try to submit a new form to see what will happen if we leave one of these empty. All right, so I did a lot, and then I'm going to leave the amount to be empty. And then address uh, then it and hit the submit button. And well, looks like this is what it was going. So uh, whenever any one of these fields is not being submitted, it will show up as um, a validation error, which means that users will need to submit every few so that um, we need to submit each and every few in order to submit the form. Right. Well, we are so, hitting error and and it shows that it works. That's yep. good. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the form builder and mm -hmm. like what you said earlier, layer by layer. So let's talk about another layer here. So mm -hmm. earlier we have already add on the uh, mandatory field. So mm -hmm. now let's hit into the amount. And I've been wondering if I can customize it so that it will only display as in uh, a numeric value. So, yep, you can customize the validator. Mm -hmm. Scroll all the way down. All the way down and somewhere here. This is the so. formatting, uh, but what you're looking for is, uh, are you, you are trying to enforce um, uh, numeric typing value? in numeric, right? Okay, scroll mm -hmm. all the way down. Okay. Yeah, under type. Um, okay, numeric. Set to numeric. Yep, there you go. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so the number and... formatting is to uh, say, for example, you want to have a thousand separators and stuff. So, so just go mm -hmm. ahead and yeah, check it out. Yep. Uh, I see. Okay. So say, for yep. example, uh, two, two decimal. And then prefix. Okay. Let me try with US currency. Yep. Like, see to believe. Right. So you just need to yeah. hit OK and preview. <laughs> okay. You, uh, All right. Yeah, you'll be able to. Yep. Okay, let me touch something in. And uh, okay, well, I see. So this is how it will shows up as. Okay, cool. So let me see the form. All right. And before we move on to the runtime, since we are now in the form builder, mm -hmm. I'm going to drag in a select box. Sure. Here, and I'm going to put our name as the branch so that the applicant will be able to choose which ones that they're going to apply, mm -hmm. um, to apply their loans. Mm -hmm. So, okay, one. And for now, I'm just going to hard code the few. So the first option, if we empty by testing the label as place for that. And the second one, um, let's put in a city, let's call it as um, Chicago. So Chicago. And um New York City. All right. And the third one, what else? Mm, maybe Boston. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so Penny, what you are doing there, um mm -hmm. having the first option as empty is already a best practice. Mm -hmm. So that um the options is not um selected by default. So there's no accidentally selections on Chicago, for example. Uh, so, yeah, awesome. way to go. Okay. So I'll click OK. And a little bit more. Okay, here you go. So if you build it. And well, uh, 
it looks good to me. Yeah, just the options here. And I'm going to close this and save the, the form. And okay, so let's go back to the runtime and mm -hmm. refresh it to check it out. Okay, all right, so let's refresh it. Okay, so now that the new field has been added, and we have mm -hmm. the three options here. So before we cool. move on into onto the next step, uh, Hugo, I remember that there's another way that we can make use of instead of hard coding the the cities. Yeah. So um, um in in a best practice, we should have a lookup table so that um, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll be more um scalable that way. So yeah, uh, can okay. you create a new form and call it as branch? All right. Mm -hmm. Let me create a new form. And name this as branch. Mm -hmm. Yep, keep it simple. And, yep. Loom Loan and underscore branch. branch. Cool. All right, so save it. And okay, so let me rename this as a branch. Okay, branch and drag in a text field. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call this as the name. Let's call this as the name. Uh, wait for a while for it to load. A little bit more. So let, let's wait for a while more. And Hugo, I noticed that there's this auto save when push. So how does this apply? This is this is so that when we are you are jumping between uh, elements, uh, whatever mm -hmm. that you have key in so far will be committed. Um, so or when you close this explicitly by, um, by clicking the the, the X bu button beside the checkbox, okay. it will also save right. So uh... in order to demonstrate that more, uh, can you try to edit the section? Okay. Yep. yep, you're editing text field, right? Can you edit a section? Section? Yep, you can see that uh, this is what we call as the property editor. Mm -hmm. So the property editor would stay put in place and we will commit uh, whatever that you're keying in so far before switching to the next element that you're trying to edit. Uh... So this would um, streamline and cut down all the uh, um, cursor movings. Um, yeah, yep. Yep. And and yeah, so it will make your um, designing works better, faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, pretty cool. So, okay, so let me see. Okay, since I don't create one field for timing. Mm -hmm. This is good enough. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And save the form. Yes, save it and create a CIUD. Okay, Maybe. so yep. CIUD mm -hmm. and generate. Mm -hmm. Very and cool. And here we go. So, uh okay, so then since this is generate, let's say, let's go back to the first form builder to link the select box to this form. And just, after just before that, we do that, Benny, it will be good if you can uh check out what you have just created, right? To make sure that you are able to key in all the mm. branches, right? Before start to link up the old form, uh, the request form to the to the new yep. um, new yeah, form. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. let's refresh it. And yep, as what you said, there's this um, new section new being created now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to manage one. So let's try it out. I'm going to create a new one. Uh, okay. So let's put in a new city seal and go and call it back in. Save it. Uh, two more. So maybe Portland. Save it. And another one. So um Dallas. All right, so hit the save button. And here we go. So uh again the ID field is showing up here. So quick one. Let me go in the data list builder and remove the ID, save it, and refresh it. Okay, here we go. So it looks good to me. So uh all right, so let's go back to the first form builder and mm -hmm. here we go. Yep. So I'm going to head over to the select box. Okay, so uh let me scroll down and somewhere Choose here. The option pointer. Yep. Okay, so Point default, default form yep, right. Mm -hmm. Point and to the default. I'm going to choose the form. 
Okay, so right. brand. And the it label. will be the name. Name. It's the name. Okay. Click OK. And right oh, yeah. before I click um, OK. As a, as yeah. a best practice, add an empty option like what you have done just now. Yep. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so let me name this as this as the label. All right. And that's it. So let's click OK. Preview it. And well, yep, the new field has now been updated. And before we save the form, let's go back to the select box. And since the previous hard coded cities has now been replaced by the latest um latest cities, we can now remove it since it this is no longer required. So let mm -hmm. me play this and save the form. All right. So go back to the runtime and we need to refresh it. Okay, so let's check out the updated form in the real time. And yep. submit a new request. Okay, let, let's try one, another one. So that. And okay, so latest we have been updated. And then a mark say 5,000 address. Okay, let's type in something here. And submit, submit the form. Process started and inbox. I have received that one new. This time I'm going so, to uh, reject it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry? Cool. No, you were you were having the admin mode turned on just now. It might confuse uh, the yeah. you're supposed to play the end user role. Yeah. So it's good that yeah. you have to turn it off. Yep. Turn it off. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and um, let's head over to the manage request. And okay, cool. So like what we can see over here. Um this the latest updated updated cities is now being the process has been started successfully and then we can now view the records over the managed request section. Cool. All right. So with that, yeah. we are now done with the no code demo. And now let's move on to the to the low code demo and make use of the hash variable to pre-populate the name field in the form. So that the applicant will not need to keep typing in their name and translate them into the next field. So let's go back to uh, the form builder. Yeah, form builder. And go inside the name. And under value, let's bring up the hash variable assistant by using the keyboard shortcut key. Uh, okay, so it is. Control C and three. Okay. Yep. Essentially, we are um, the combo is control and the hash key. Uh, looks like okay, control shift and three. Uh, yep. looks like it's not working for me today. Is it not working? Yeah. All right. Never mind. Don't worry. Okay. I'm here. So, okay, cool. oh, what do you need, you friend? All right. Okay. Right. It's up. <laughs> yeah. A bit slow. Okay. So okay. So uh, let's type in current. User dot full name since we like to pre populate the user of it and um, click hit enter. Okay. All right. So now let's have a look at it and click okay. Wait a lot and preview it. Here we go. So before we save the form, let's go back to the this field again and scroll all the way down. And okay, here is it. So as now, since we are pre-populating it, we can just make it as read only and check the display fields as label and so that it will be shown as label and applicant will not longer need to edit it. All right, so let's save the form. Okay, and then go back to the runtime, refresh it, and here we go. Okay, cool. So we have now done the form, um, the entire form section. So now let's move on to the corporate design branding of the app. So with that, now that uh, looks like the app is uh, with the blue team. 
So if I would like to edit it and say customize it a bit, I'm going to go the inside. User view builder. Yep. Yep. User view builder. Mm -hmm. And head over to settings. Mm -hmm. Let's go down and that is this primary color. Okay. So uh say I would like to have a much brighter tint, or uh, maybe I will choose the uh, orange. Let's try it out. Preview it. Mm, well, okay, looks good to me. And yep. I'm going to save this mm -hmm. and go to the runtime. Refresh it. So next time when you load, it should be, yep, okay. there you go. That's good. The orange view. Okay. Well, um, this looks good to me, but uh, Hugo, what if I would like something with a totally look and feel, I with totally look and feel that if this, uh, you can go to the app center and head over to the marketplace. Wait for it to load for a while. Yeah, so audience, please bear with us because this is a live, live demo. So, um, and yeah. we are dealing with a, we are making use of a Joget Club. So it seems like uh, it gets a little bit slow right now. So please bear with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So let's search for a team and see mm -hmm. if there's any. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's, find the angel team the app right. why this button and i'm going to install it mm -hmm. okay all right so uh let's go back to the user view builder and scroll up till we see the team okay, so, so you have just mm -hmm. uh, installed a new plugin a new functionality that just added to a copy of joget um I mm -hmm. afraid you need to reload your user view builder in order to see uh, the new team in the Trotta selection. Yeah. I see. Okay, got it. So now that I have refreshed, mm -hmm. I'm going to go inside the setting. And um, okay, yep. so Angle team is here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let me preview it to have a look at it. See how this looks like. Okay, well. Looks good to me. Pretty awesome. All right. And All right. I'm going to close it. See. Fix it. Okay. Refresh it. Mm -hmm. And well, this is a totally different look and feel. And well, pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Okay. So with that, now that we are halfway through the low code demo, and Hugo, I will need your help, the IT user, to further enhance the functionality of the app. And in terms of this um, user view thing, can I get your help to add a gradient type of thing and to try something much more vibrant? Sure, sure. Let me take over and continue with the demo. All right, let me stop sharing. Can you see my app center? Yep, you can see it. Okay, cool. Let me just log in. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I can see that there's a new app that pops up in my app center now. Mm -hmm. Just quickly yep. check it out and see um, what the IT team can uh, help you with today. So I can yeah, see that you have yep. created, I would guess, a CIUD, right? Mm -hmm. And I can see that there's a process here, right? Let me just do a quick uh, stock take of, of what you have done, mm. right? I can see that you have designed a process. Okay, and this is the flow, all right? Um, looks like you have not uh, changed the design. Um, this is the default one from the app generator. <laughs> and you have created some forms, some lists, and a user view. All right. So, um, Penny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you are saying that you would like to yep. have a more colorful treatment to the, so, mm -hmm, to the, to the top bar here. Is that, is that right? Yep. 
Okay, cool. All right, let me see what I can do. All right. Um, so what I'll do is that I'll inspect the team that we have. Okay. And to see, just to confirm, if there's any way that we can um, yep. apply a different kind of color treatment, right, to the to the uh, color scheme here, right? Okay. Yep. Let's preview. Okay. Yeah. All right. It seems like um, we can only choose a color, right, and it will cover the whole header here, right? Okay. So if you were to try to do something. Um, um, our ordinary here, right? So we may need to resort to the mm -hmm. use of um, a little custom, bit more gradient of thing. Yeah, a custom CSS in order to achieve that, right? So let me just quickly okay. Google that CSS gradient. Okay, all right. Let's make use of this website here, and uh, I'm sure that um after this uh you will be able to. Um, DIY, right? Do it yourself and to be able to change according to your mm. preference. So okay, let me just cool. quickly make use of whatever that's being offered here. Mm -hmm. so, so, for example, right, just, oh, wow, that's very strong. Okay. Okay, all right, let's, yeah. let's keep it simple for now. Yeah. Let me just copy the report. Yeah. Oh, before I can do that, right? So I will need to. Uh, let me close what's not being used. Mm -hmm. Okay. So before that, um, so let the developer do the developer thing. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do That's now great. is to yeah. uh, bring up the um developers toolbar, right, and okay. to obtain the necessary the correct um CSS uh, selector, um, in order to do that. So I found this guy here, header dot bar, and if I were to just to confirm that this is the correct one, let me make some changes to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, this is the correct one, header dot bar. So what I'll do is that I'll get back to the user view and put in the rule that I discovered, and the okay. CSS rules that have been generated from uh, the website earlier, right? Once I have key this in, I just need preview and looks like, yep, we have mail it, <laughs> right? Okay, so awesome. Once I confirm it is, just click save so that I can push it to the runtime. So next mm -hmm. time when we refresh, you will be seeing the new um, header. What does it look like for you, Penny? Wow, well, this is absolutely amazing, I would say. Well, this is pretty cool. Okay, um, all right. Yeah, since we are done on this part, uh, Hugo, I have another question for you. Sure, go so, ahead. So, uh, yeah, I have been wondering, can, can we add any other input that is more mobile friendly so that we can cater to uh, some of the mobile users as well? Right, sure. Um. Let me just check out uh, what, uh, how your form looks like, and then uh, we okay. can go from there, right? So, right. Do, are you referring to the to the input here to be more uh, mobile friendly? Mm, that... Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yes, we can actually. Let me just switch gear and um, um, maybe go into pro code. <laughs> So we have uh, a okay. Juget OSS GitHub page where we actually open source some of our plugin here. Um, mm. So the one that we are interested in looking at today is touch friendly elements. Okay, uh, it will it actually uh, offers a few form elements: uh, range slider, list selectors, and the toggle switch. So let me just. Um, Okay. Um, show you show you how it actually looks like, right? Um, it is also available in the Joget Marketplace. Okay. Oh, okay. So the search for under form, form element, and there you go. 
uh, touch friendly few elements plugin, right? Just to grab some screenshots and so that you have an idea on how it will look like. So this is a range slider. This mm. is a toggle switch and this is a leaf selection. Uh, and they are ah. uh, finger friendly, mobile friendly, right? Yeah, for, definitely. So yeah. For mobile devices. Yeah. So okay, let cool. me just um, um, show you um, or the audience how we can actually build the plugin from. Um, from scratch. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do here is to download the zip, right? So I'm going to download the source code out of it, right? And I'm going to um, have it uh, unzip. Just give me a moment. Okay. All right. Okay. So I pointed to it, right? So let me just list down all the files that's available here, right? So what we are, I'm going to do next is that um, in my environment, I already have uh, the necessary um, libraries or software uh, installed, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is essentially a uh, Maven project. So I have Maven uh, installed as well. So I can just issue the command Maven install. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Um, yep. And you will be building the plugin for us. Oh wow! There you okay. go. So, wow. um, so the result of this, uh, is that we will uh be getting a a file, right? Uh, a jar file, uh, to be precise, right? Once we have uh, obtained this, mm. we can then um head towards the uh, platform again, navigate to the platform settings. Okay, go to manage plugin. Right, and then uh, upload plugin. So I'll just need to point to the um, target, right? The jar file that we talked about just now, right? Just open okay, and upload. Yeah. All right, so it will, uh, for confirmation, we can see that there are three new elements that has been installed and made available in our um, copy of Joket here, right? Uh, so what okay. would happen now? Mm -hmm. So what will happen now is that if I were to um, edit the form, okay, you will see that uh, there are three new uh, um, elements on the left here, right? So for example, I have the slider. Ah, uh, right. Yep. So. Just, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, um, um, dependencies, right? Okay, maybe when you apply loan, you need to let the bank know how many dependencies that you have. Right? So yeah. ranging from, say, 10 to 20, default is 10, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just to test it out. So this is how the dependencies will look like, and it is um, mobile friendly, right? Uh, and okay. there's also a toggle switch. Edit. So let me just follow your best practice here, Penny, and put it on the right hand side so that it doesn't block the mm -hmm. form. <laughs> right? So maybe um, urgent, right? Whether it yeah. is urgent or not, this is a mm. toggle switch. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's also a list selections. Um, I can't think of a good example here. So maybe there's a categories. Mm -hmm. Categories. Right. So um, A, B, C, right? Just a quick example, right? So then in the actual form, you need to simply at a single click, you'll be able to check and uncheck accordingly, right? So mm -hmm. let me just save this and I would uh, also like to show you more um, since we have okay. asked this question. Um, All right. So the whatever um, that we have built so far um, in Joget, it is actually a um, responsive uh, design, right? So what do I mean by that is that if mm -hmm. I were to bring up the developer tools, right? Let me just park it at the side. Okay and turn on the uh, responsive mode, right? So we can see that um, the, the same form that we have designed, right? It would react and respond to um, screen size change, right? 
So it is actually suited for mm -hmm. desktop laptop, um, like a tablet mode, or even uh, on the phone as well, right? Oh, so I see. You, okay. So we don't really need to um, uh, design Do the, all the changes solution yeah. yep, and cater to different target devices. Right, mm. so on on a mobile phone, right? This is how it would look like. Okay. Well, look. Well, that means that it is catering to all devices, no matter is a laptop, uh, a tablet, or mobile devices, mobile phones, and well, I think that, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yep. 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 So. Okay. Yep. So I guess that's it for now. All right. Any anything else before we go, Penny? Um, all right, so we have done the form, the mm -hmm. data list, the process, and even the user view. And well, I think we are good for now. All right, thank you very much. Let me just stop my share. All right, and I'm going to pass it back to Adrian. So, um, can see the demo is done. Uh, let me just pass over the control to you, Penny. Okay. You have no okay. All right. And here we go. So now that we have demonstrated it in our demo earlier, and looks like this new way of building enterprise applications allows stronger collaboration with the IT and business with the use of no code, low code, and pro code. So what are your thoughts, Hugo? Yep, yep. So um, uh, as we can see from the demo, um, the IT team and the business teams, they will be able to um, um, talk on the same platform, right? So this would um, definitely cut down the turnaround time, right? So, um, and we can embark on a new uh, practices, right? DevOps, uh, whereby we will be able to continuously roll out and um, um, ascertain each, uh, confirm each and every uh, layer uh, mm -hmm. that we are building, right? Before proceeding with the next layer, right? So this in turn would, um, of course, reduce the time to market and there's a, like you say, many stronger collaborations uh, with the yep. um, IT and the business teams. Yeah. Mm, okay, cool. And with that, looks like, well, yep, we will only need to drag and drop the elements, add on a little bit of stripping when necessary. And for power yep. user like you, we can even <laughs> further extend the functionality of it. Yep, and just to... Yep. Yeah, just to add in, um, in 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 uh, enterprise, um, more often than not, um, solutions doesn't sit in silo. Um, so whatever apps that we have developed so far, uh, uh, maybe perhaps for future webinars, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to just tell you that um, whatever that built so far, we can actually prepare endpoints, uh, so that we would be able to uh, mm -hmm. perform integrations with other systems. So. Uh, in Joget, we have the API builder um, for integration purpose, mm. just FYI. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's okay. Uh, okay. something that the IT team uh, would be able to be in charge with, right? So that the mm -hmm. IT team would be uh, doing all these heavy lifting, the integration works, right? Where yeah. the business teams, uh, you'll be able to focus on um, the, the form business design. Requirements. Yeah, the business requirements side of things. Yeah, mm. yeah. okay. So we hope that um, through the demo, you're able to relate it to your day-to-day -day operation or experience it in the application development and make use of the Joda platform to resolve your business issues and meet the organization objective. With that, I believe this will be the end of our demo and I'll pass it over back to you, Adrian. Adrian, over to you. Thank you, Penny. Right, so we've come to the Q&A session. Um, let me just have a look at the chat and the Q&A. So um, Hugo, we do have a, a few questions going on here. Uh, the first question is, does Joker support communicating with existing APIs? Yes, uh, like, yes, yes, that's a very good question. Um, uh, I was kind of um, half answering it. So let me just try to answer this in full. Um, so yes. Uh, um, you can have integrations goes both way, right? So it's either Joget to consume externals or to externals to consume Joget. So for external to consume Joget, you can make use of the Joget API builders. So where you can um, selectively uh, expose and uh, manage the permissions so that uh, the externals will be able to consume APIs uh, that are prepared by Joget. And of course, uh, uh, 
the other way around, right? Uh, they are, um, uh, Joget is also uh, able to um, consume uh, JSON API or even uh, SOAP web services as well. So, right. yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, uh, Hugo. So I think the second question is regarding uh, if can you use Joget to create an interface with REST CRUD support of an existing API? Yep, yep, yep. I think um, that answers as well, I presume. Yeah, that yeah. answers as well. Yep. All right. So the third question is can we edit the default process also? I think during your demo, you shown the process. And can you add another la level of approval? Yes, uh, yes, definitely it is possible as well. Uh, but we, uh, let me just, if you don't mind, <laughs> let me okay. just quickly share my screen and show right, you the let process me still share. Either. Yeah, just a quick. Uh, 30 second time me. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, the app that we have been developing on, right? So I just need to click into processes, uh, design process. And um, so this is the existing process. So we can either modify existing process or to even add a new process to it, right? So I hope that this answers the questions. Over and back to you, Adrian. Right, so um, I guess we are a bit run, running out of time. Um, so you guys don't have, um, your audience, you don't have to worry. Uh, we've actually, uh, for those questions that are not answered, rest assured, we'll get back to you via email later on. This is the, our Joget ecosystem as shown before just, just now. Uh, so you wish to um, download any new apps or plugins that has already made available, you can head over to the marketplace and anything regarding um, documentation, you can have a look at knowledge base, our knowledge base, and that's the rest of the ecosystem that you can have a look at. And um, right, so before we end, I believe, um, don't forget to fill up the feedback form that will uh, pop up later once you exit the, the webinar. And next of all is the lastly, it's our polling, our drawing. Let's see, um, our polling. So our first winner today is um, Shagish Kunyel. Congratulations, you've won the Joget Academy voucher. And next is, um, sorry, Gu, sorry, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Guru Jot Singh. Congratulations. Okay, so um, we'll reach out the uh, to the winners via email and go get these vouchers to, to to the winners. So please check your email, and if you don't see them, uh, please check your spam folder. And um, once again, thank you all. Stay safe. And uh, you guys want to say anything? Penny, Hugo, before yep, we end. Yep. Thanks for joining us today. Take care and stay safe, everyone. We'll get back yep. to you on the um, any of the unanswered questions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.